Welcome back to another Mr. Lee Teaches YouTube tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about Google Forms, which is a topic we've covered on this channel before, but we're going to go deep dive into it and talk about logical branching. Or in other words, have you ever taken a quiz or a, a survey and one question leads to another based off of your answer? So if you answer A, you go to one section of the form or the quiz or the, the survey, but if you answer B, it takes you to a whole nother section. Um, we're going to talk about how to do that with Google Forms. It's very easy. Let's take a look. Okay, so you see that we already have a, a, a quiz started. And so I'm just going to keep building this quiz, but I'm going to show you what I've done so far. So if we go in here and we do a preview on what I've gotten created so far, We've got math quiz. You call it whatever you need to or put whatever instructions on this front page. And then we click next. And so we have a question. Uh, so if I were a student and I got this question wrong, let's say I'm Mark 17. If I go to next, it pulls up a video on how to solve that equation. And so the instructions are to watch this video, try the question again. So I've watched the video. I can actually play it right here in the Google form. Uh, I'll click next and it takes me back to the question so that I can try to get it correct. So this encourages the student to review over the material that they should know or that they may have trouble with and then go back and answer the question again and keep doing that process until they get it correct. So doing the math real quick, the answer is three. So now if I click next, I get a great job. Okay, so I know I got it correct as a student. Uh, so I click next and it takes me to question two. And the same process is gonna happen with question two. If I get it correct, I get a great job, thumbs up, move on to the next question. If not, I get a tutorial video, I watch the video, I learn how to do that problem, then I go back and take the problem, you know, answer the question over again. So let's go back into my form and let's see how I did all of that. So we're gonna be creating a whole bunch of sections. And so what we have here is this equal sign right here. It, that creates a new section. So we're gonna use that quite a bit in this. So for the first section, I just have the title. That's, that's the opening quiz uh, form page right here where I've, I've just got the name of the quiz. So that's, that's this opening section here. So section two is my first question and I label it question one. And then I put the question in. So when I'm actually creating it, this is the question this is the section title. And that's important to remember, you wanna title your sections because we're gonna be skipping between sections and we wanna know what each section is when we go to, to do our logic. So question one, that's the name of this section. In here, I've put my equation in, I've put my question in, I've put the answers. And so instead of going in and making this a quiz and telling it, you know, mark this answer correct or not, I come down here to the bottom and I click on the three dots. So we pull that out right there, three dots. And then I want to go to section based on answer. So when I do that, I get these options here. So I can go back and look. And for if I answer 17 for this question, I can tell it to go to the reteach question one section. I can pick from any of the sections I've created in this Google form. And I want to go to the one that says reteach question one. Uh, so it's very important to label your sections with what they actually are so it's easy to go back later when you're doing the logical part. Uh, question, if I answered it number nine, uh, I want to reteach question one. If I answer it three, which is the correct answer, I want to go to the good job question one section. And I'll have the same section made for good job question two, good job question three, and so on. And that way it makes it easy for me to find later. Uh, and then again, if I answered 27, that's wrong. So I'm gonna go to reteach question one. After that, I can choose down here. So after section two, continue to the next section. Section, that's fine. Uh, I'll leave it that way. And so here we have our section called good job question one. And it has our image in it. Now I can make this image a little bit smaller because it is kind of big. Um, if I wanted to change this image, all I have to do is just click on the image icon over here and then I can either upload an image, uh, if I know the URL to an image, if I have it in my Google album, in my Google Drive. So I can pick images from pretty much anywhere and upload them. So I could Bitmoji uh, myself in here and there I go. So 
you can even do a bitmoji of yourself and if you don't like it you can always delete it so once you have your good job question the way you want it instead of having to completely redo that process over and over and over again let me make this a little bit smaller there we go I can actually click on these three dots and duplicate the section so I've got good job question one good job question two and then I need to change the title of this one because this one's going to be good job question three Oops. and so you see how that works I just make each section so if I know I'm gonna have ten questions I'm gonna need ten good jobs and then I'm also going to need 10 reteaches. So I'll go ahead a lot of times and just make my good job responses, um, sections, all at the same time because they're all going to be the same. The reteach ones are going to have individual videos attached to them. So I might make those, you know, after the fact or as I'm going through, uh, as I'm thinking about it. But a lot of times for something that's just the same thing over and over and over again with a different title, just go ahead and just, just knock out a whole bunch of them and duplicate the section. So now we've got three, and this will be four, and then this will be five, and now we're done with this. So we've got all the good jobs. So we're done with that. And it doesn't matter where these go. So as you see, I mean, I've got my good job, one, two, three, four, and five in a row, and above that I've got my question one, and let me scroll back down. And now I've got my reteach question one. And so it doesn't matter the order because you're telling it where to go. It doesn't have to go in order of the sections because you're telling it which section to go to and then which section to go back to. So after all of my, my great jobs, I need to change something. So after good job question one, I want it to go to section two or question two because they got question one right, they get a good job. Now I want them to go to question two. So you see here, I've got them going to question two. Um, after good job question two, I want them to go to question three. Well, if I look, I haven't made question three yet, so I can't choose it. So I'm gonna go and make question three. So we've got question two here, and we'll go ahead and add a section. So now that I've added a new section, I'm gonna name it reteach question two because I've got my good job question two now I need to reteach question two and so I want to add a video so I'm gonna click the video button and it pulls up a YouTube search now this is a one variable equation very similar to the one before uh, so let me do a one variable equation with negatives let's see what I find uh, the best way to do this, though, is to go out and find the video that you want as the reteach, and then you can go and click on the URL button here, paste that URL in, and it'll find that exact video. Uh, you can't really preview the videos too well like this. You can read the, the descriptions, but that's about it. Um, this is not the best way to do that. So two-step equations, so one, seven, one, seven, with a negative variable. Let's just pick that one, for example. So I'm going to select that one. And then I'm going to tell them to watch the video and try again. And so now I'm done with that. So if I click out, I'm going to create a new section. And now that I got my new section, this is actually going to be question three. But while I'm thinking about it, this is the reteach or yeah, the reteach for question two. I can go ahead and after this section, I want to go back to question two. And that way when they watch the video, it'll put them back to question two where they can answer the question again and hopefully get it right. So now I'm done with question two, almost. And I'm ready for question three. So I'm gonna go ahead and make question three and we'll say solve this equation and I'm gonna do 24x minus 15 equals 32. Um, that's not a good example. That's a better example. And then I'll make it a multiple choice. Now you gotta make these multiple choice um, for this to work. Short answer isn't gonna work right. Um, but you get the idea how to make the questions and how to move through. 
So let's go back up to question two real quick. I know I'm skipping around a little bit, but I don't need to go through and just make all of this for you. I'm just trying to give you the examples to get you started and get you off of this video and into creating your own logical uh, quiz. So I'm going to click here in my question two, and then I'm going to click the, bo the bottom three dots. And I'm going to get the option to go to section based on answer. And so what's the answer to this one? Let's see, that's going to be eight. So negative two is the answer. So if they pick eight, it's going to be wrong. So I want them to go to reteach question two. And if they pick 12, it's wrong. So I want to reteach question two. But if they pick negative two, it's correct. So I want to go to good job question two. And then if they pick positive two, that's wrong also. So I want to reteach question two. And now I'm completely done with question two. Um, so I'm hoping this is making sense for you. We can go on and we can keep doing these examples over and over again, but I think you've got the gist of it. Now, the one thing to remember is you can make these as long as you want, but make sure you go through and pick a wrong answer and pick the right answer and make sure this logic works before you give it to students or before you give the survey to, to somebody else. Um, and just make sure that what you have in there works. I'm going to stop myself right here and just remind you that this is exactly how you would make a choose your own adventure story or better yet, have your students use this kind of logic branching, have them watch this video to learn how to do it. And then they can make a choose your own adventure story. Um, you can do all kinds of different things with this logic branching. It doesn't have to be a reteach quiz. It can be anything that you can imagine that you would need to be able to skip around and come back and go forward uh, based off of answers. And this is a great flipped lesson kind of situation where you can send this math quiz home with a student and if they get it wrong, there's built in tutorials, there's built in relearning opportunities for the students. And so even though you, the content expert, aren't there with the student while they're practicing, you do have that resource available to them and you're kind of forcing them to walk through the steps of reviewing their knowledge before they go back and retry the question. I hope you can use this in your classroom or in your job uh, even tomorrow. Uh, it doesn't take long to set up these logical branching in Google Forms and you can get very, very intricate where one question leads to another question leads to another question and then back around to a different question. Um, you can get very, very involved in, in how you branch all this out. Uh, but keep it simple at first. Try just a few. Throw in some great tutorials that you find first. Don't look for them through here. It's very hard to do that. And um, and, and have a, a great Thanksgiving uh, next week. It's actually coming up for us. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. If you like my content, give me a thumbs up for this video. And then if you want to see all the videos that I release and get a notification when I do release them, uh, go ahead and click the subscribe button down there. And then there's a little bell. Click it too. And then you'll know every time I upload a video and you can come watch it and see if you can use it in your class. Until next time, thanks for watching.